Hi there, welcome to Icon Physics 101. In this video you'll learn all about dynamic and static physics, friction, elasticity and damping settings, as well as object meshes and why they're important. You'll be able to produce an animation like this in just a few minutes. To start out I've imported a basketball from the physics props, as well as a regular platform with texture and a regular sphere with a metal texture. I'll select these balls and raise them above the platform first. When I hit play, you'll see that the basketball, which already has active physics, will fall down right through the platform. Let's take a look at the physics properties of the basketball by selecting it and going to physics settings on the modify panel to the right. For now, just notice that the active physics box at the top is selected, and the physics state is set to dynamic. If I move over to the metal ball, I'll toggle on the active physics and set the state to dynamic as well. Dynamic basically means that the object will react to gravity and can be pushed by other objects. I'm going to leave all the other settings the way they are for now. When I move over to the platform, I want to make sure this one is set to a static state. This basically means that the object cannot be moved, it just sits there. When I play back, you'll see that both balls will bounce off the static platform. But there's a little something I missed. Let's tilt the platform a bit by rotating it, and then try again. This time you'll see the balls will roll down the platform, except the metal ball is not really rolling, more like sliding. This is because I need to specify the bound type for that object. In the bound type section of the physics window, you can see that there are a number of different options. You can try all of them until you find one that's suitable for your shape. Because I have a ball in this case, I'll just choose Sphere. You'll see that the basketball also has a sphere bounding type. Now when I play back, the metal ball will rotate. Now I have the platform flat again, and you'll notice that the amount of bounce in the balls is a little different. To adjust this, I need to go back into the physics window, and look at the elasticity values of my objects. You can see that the metal ball has an elasticity of 50, while the basketball is a bit higher at 70 which is why it bounces a bit more. I'm going to change both of their elasticity values to 20. And you'll see in the playback that they basically just fall and sit there, not really bouncing at all. Let's change it up a bit to 90. You can see that with an elasticity value of 90, the balls bounce quite a bit more. Now for damping. I have my basketball selected, and I'll bring the damping up to 100. When I play back, you'll see that nothing really happens. This is due to the fact that damping basically works to restrict movement. Think of it almost like air resistance. If I put it to 90, you'll see there's still a lot of restriction on movement that makes it drop slower and bounce less. I've now set both balls back to their original settings. Now I'm going to mess with the platform by putting the elasticity up to 70, so you'll see a bit more bouncing. If I boost it up to 100, you'll see the bouncing will increase a lot, and the basketball will actually increase its bounce height each time. So now I have the balls on a ramp again, and I'm going to show you the results of friction values. First, let's see both balls roll down the ramp normally. I'm going to adjust the friction on the metal ball to zero. Take a look at what happens. The ball will just slide down the ramp because there's no friction to make it roll. Friction can also have an effect on speed. If I put the friction up to 100, you'll see the ball will also move noticeably slower. Now I'll show you the importance of the bounding type on an object that has a different shape, like this bowl here. If I go in and activate the physics, you can see that I have a box bounding mesh selected by the red outline. You'll notice when I play back that the ball will seem to bounce off some kind of invisible box. I'll switch this over to a sphere, and as you can guess, the balls bounce off the red spherical bounding mesh. The cylinder will have the same result according to its shape.
With objects like cylinders, you can adjust the axis of the mesh as well to better suit your object. Unfortunately, none of these would really work well on a bowl. The best option in this case is self-mesh, which you see here. But let's take a look at the others first. If your object comes with a predefined mesh from your modeling program, you can select bounding mesh for the best results. This bowl does not, so it just forms a cube. With the convex hull option, the physics engine will basically cut corners, meaning any depressed angle in the object will just be passed over. You can see the example here that when I play back, the convex hull doesn't conform to the depressed shape of the bowl. Finally, I'll return it to self-mesh, which takes a little more memory, but will give the most accurate results. Now I have the result I'm looking for. For a little bit more detail on convex mesh, I'll demonstrate on this plane model here. You can see that the mesh is not really that detailed, and it cuts corners in certain areas, but generally conforms to the shape. If I go into wireframe view here, you'll see that my pylons also have a convex mesh. This mesh is ideal for this shape, and with simpler convex bounding meshes, your physics results will be a bit better. I have these pylons here to show you the effect of different mass on collision. You'll see my mass is 10, and when I play back the animation, the plane will drop and edge the pylons out of its path. If I put the mass up to 100, you can see that the plane will have much more collision priority, and the pylons will go flying out of the way. Alternately, if I set the mass back down to 5, the plane will essentially just make a soft landing on top of the pylons and slide a little bit. For more on iClone physics, check out our next tutorial on kinematic properties.